Thank you so much for coming out to proclaim. This is an experiment. It had better work. Otherwise, you're welcome. Please have your seats, uh, pastors, ministers, oh God's people. My name is Mose, and I will be taking the unenviable task of starting uh, to speak at this event. I mean, when you speak at an event where a pastor Kato is going to speak, you even have to go and talk to God about it and say, what's going on, God? And then he gives you encouragement. <laughs> but you are in for a treat. Amen. Thanks so much for being here. We have lots of pastors from different churches. I thought the MCs would sort of help us know who is in the house, but uh, they decided that I would do their job. So whoever is in charge of the MCs, uh, uh, even the projectors have gone off in anticipation of what I was about to say next. But we have lots of people from different churches. I think we have more than 50 churches represented in the room. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So thank you so much for coming and for being here, pastors, ministers. Uh, we have the most important job in the world. And I'm not just pumping you up. Look. You already have people at your church who say good things about you, hopefully. <laughs> but we have the most important job in the world, one with eternal consequences. Yeah? And so our work is not just, oh, I'm a pastor, what? No, 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 my friend. In the last two years, I've come to appreciate the importance of the work that we do and how we should always be very uh, aware of that and not ashamed of that amen yeah look people are chasing things that will be over in a few years we are chasing things that will be going on <laughs> thousands millions of years to come so thank you thank you so much pastors i'm going to take a risk uh, you know i'm a risky person and invite the lead pastors where you are the senior pastor of the church you lead or in the in the country to stand up because i want us to appreciate these lead pastors and i'm going to ask everyone organize your voice and your hands and your joy because we are about to uh let me go you see if the president of uganda came in here yeah, even if you may be of different colors, I'm sure there will be enough excitement out of honor, right? If the Kabaka of Uganda walked in here, even if you are not a Muganda, even you, you would, you would be excited. I, I hope you would be. And if you are righteous, you should be. Yeah, on behalf of all the other people who... For, now, I'm talking about people who have a more important job than all those people I've just mentioned. So can I invite the senior pastors to stand up in this place as we appreciate them. Yeah! Proclaim! Come on! Come on! Yay! 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 Woo! 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 Keep that club going. Amen. Now, I'm going to invite that all the senior pastors who are back there should come to these tables on the second row, these tables here. Whoever is in charge of them, whoever is helping them, please bring them forth. There's some space on that table, there's some space on this table, there's some space on this table. Let, let's, the, right here, right on the second row tables. Let the, please, keep the whatever going you people do you know what we are talking about here these are the v -V -V vips of the kingdom of god forget the vips of this world these are v -V -V vips of the kingdom 
Thank you so much, pastors, senior pastors. Please have your seats. Uh, I, I really, I really want us to honor you. You've taken the risks. You've endured abuse, lack of appreciation. You've been foxed. You've been knifed. You, th people have said things about you. By now, you should have quit, but you're still going. Yeah. If, if not, if we gain nothing else out of proclaim, at least the pastors should go back feeling appreciated. That that is purpose enough. Amen. Amen. I have a timer, and it counts downwards. I don't even know who came up with these kind of things. But I want us to take a look at the theme of this event coming out of Isaiah 60 verse 22 I hope that we've recovered the projection usage oh awesome there we go Isaiah 60 22 it says let's see together a little one shall become a thousand and a small one a strong nation I, the Lord, will hasten it in its time. Somehow the projection keeps going off, but we will survive. I will tell stories. Yeah, this one only works for the people here. Those guys back there can't read it. So a little one, th this is in the book of Isaiah, towards the very end of Isaiah. You know Isaiah, okay, if, if you don't know, this is a pastor's gathering, but just in case someone dragged you here, Isaiah was a prophet in the Old Testament and is one of the prophets who prophesied the most about Jesus, right? And so he's saying a lot of good things here. From verse 1, when he says, Arise, shine, for your light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you, chapter 60. And it keeps going. And then this is the end of chapter 60. And he says, A little one shall become a thousand. A lot of the things Isaiah said, they could be contextualized to Israel at that time, but at the same time, they were talking about a time to come. And the people at that time did not fully appreciate some of the things we were saying in the context in which we live now. But about a year ago, God started giving us this word and we started latching onto it. A little one shall become a thousand and a small one a strong nation now you may look at yourself and think i'm little i'm small but god when god looks at you he sees the potential for you to become a thousand and for you to become a strong nation amen when we say nation people think about countries what what no first forget that you know, God had a relationship with a man called Abraham, which was a personal relationship. And out of that relationship came a relationship with a whole nation called Israel. And my task this morning is just to convince the pastors that within you lies a nation. Within you lies a nation. People, believers, who will come to know the Lord Jesus because of your work because of the multiplication of your work and that will be it can be to the scale of a nation amen just please whatever you do please believe it yeah you see believing costs nothing yeah it's the work they are after which will sort of take some energy but just the believing part just believe it believe it that Vive Church is a nation. That New Life Church is a nation. That Lugogo Baptist Church is a nation. Wonders Christian Center is a nation. Jesus Worship Center is a nation. I'm just looking here in front, the ones I can see quickly. Mafuno Church is a nation. Trinity Chapel is a nation. Hey! City Church! is a nation it, it, with 
United Faith Chapel is a nation. Yeah, a little one shall become a thousand, a small one as a, a strong nation. Look, he doesn't say a big one shall become a thousand. No, no, no. no. You might be thinking this is for big people. No, the prophet has said this is for small people like me. Yeah, small people like us who no one believes in or respects or even what. No, we, God has set us up to become a nation. And it is possible. It is possible. I happened to perform brilliantly in mathematics for some reason that is not subject to investigation. Uh, so I know a thing or two about extrapolation. <laughs> this is a pastor's gathering, and when I say extrapolation, people just start googling. <laughs> uh, that's uh, so. This the way I preach. Ideas keep coming up when I'm preaching, which those who teach pastors to prepare might say because you didn't prepare well <laughs> the ideas should come in the preparation phase but imagine with me a graph yeah and you have one here okay one and then one the number yeah moja yeah we have people here from nairobi so one and you extra you you draw a graph and one goes to one thousand now even if you're not good at math let's say you just are good at pictures if you do one and you add three zeros it becomes a thousand now when he says a strong nation it doesn't give us a number so i like to use the his the previous i like to extrapolate it if with a thousand it's obvious he did one and he added three zeros what does strong nation look like? I think you just add another three zeros. Uh, if I were you, I would just receive that word by faith. Yeah. Because in our generation, God is starting to raise ministries that are going to have a million people. These things have happened already in Nigeria. They are going to happen in Uganda. They are going to happen in East Africa. Where when they trace Jesus Worship Center, people who have come out of it, it's a million strong. So that when they say, call your people. Uh, you can't use a building like this when you call your people. Because a million. And I'm talking to you pastors. That's in you. God put that in you. Don't allow any negative voice of reason you see the worst voice is the voice of reason yeah the voice of reason doesn't walk by faith because you're going to look at your resources <coughs> you're going to look at your current size you're going to look at how long you've been going and how many you have and discount yourself do not discount yourself yeah I've just learned that The person who must believe the most is yourself. Yeah, because I can tell you, however much people want to, they don't believe you to a certain extent. They, they are trying. When you say certain things, they're like, yes, yes, man of God. But their faith is fading them. But you, you, you must believe. You must believe. The person with the greatest faith in your vision must be you. You must wake up every morning, look at yourself in the mirror and say, here comes trouble for the devil. Ma, ma, ma. Hallelujah. I'm talking to people's hearts right now. I'm talking to your heart. You know yourself. You know all the unbelief that has come because of people's comments, ideas, attacks. What? Some of you even have people right there on your team who are not believers in your vision but they are still on your team. The Bible says, cast out the mocker and the strife will cease. 
finish. Stop the meetings. Stop the negotiations. God didn't call you to a negotiation ministry. Your, you, it's, the most important thing for you is to protect your heart. Anything around you that compromises your heart must be eliminated. Because there are millions of people whose eternal destiny depends on the state of your heart. Am I, am I, am I making sense? Yeah, that's why you're here. Proclaim where we believe. Look, me, I believe for you. If you don't believe, I believe. Amen. And I've seen enough to believe. I've seen enough to believe. Maybe God put this vision in our hearts because maybe we sort of fit the, the, the picture of this journey. When we started this church, we were the joke of the city. Yeah, the laughing stock. <laughs> like we were young. We were not trained in church things. I've never been to Bible college even after. No, I went to Okaris Bible College for one year. Other than that, I don't have a recollection of proper training. Untrained, young, unequipped in the traditional sense unbelieved in like no one was willing to do, to take a risk and say okay you go start they no we want to go no you can't do that they're like no but we feel like god has spoken to us forget it he hasn't spoken to you but like they say it's easier to apologize than to ask for permission Some people are seeing it. Some people are waiting for the message to begin. It's begun already. So we're like, you know what? What's the worst that can happen? If we die, we die. If it doesn't work out, we'll all just go back to our former churches, apologize, and you know what? Yeah. And if it works out, we'll still go back and apologize for starting without permission, which we did, and we were forgiven. <laughs> a little one shall be become a thousand like I have many friends who were with back in the day main CEOs and who can't believe yeah like for them their faith even after 15 years of worship service has jammed to come up to say Mose no no not that Mose we know that one that joker guy the one who plays joker cracks jokes and plays keyboard that one no take away yeah even me I'm wondering what's going on so when we started that was us a rock tag band of musicians and we started we were so few that during praise and, and look we went and hired a restaurant and I think even the restaurant people, they gave us one Sunday. Then afterwards, they started hiring it out to other people. And they gave us the veranda of the restaurant. You know, when people don't believe you, uh, to the extent that they give you the veranda of the restaurant. That was our church, veranda. Yeah, Chongqing. So, during praise and worship, my goodness, there would be two people in the crowd in a crowd do you know that two people is not supposed to be a crowd two people in a crowd these ends people are singing dancing their legs off two because another two people are at the gate welcoming people of those who are not on the on the band and maybe another someone else Pros is here a young where is Pros? is she around yeah no someone else is trying to organize where the kids did we have kids we had the kid <laughs> no I hadn't yet had children ours came later didn't we have someone with a kid no one eh, no we didn't have yeah we, d we didn't have children so when we began that means that everyone was not of childbearing age yet 
I'm telling you the story. For us to use that mega venue of the veranda of the restaurant, we needed to pay a whopping 30,000 Uganda shillings per Sunday. 30K. Brian, Ezo. Yeah. Now, we never paid for two Sundays in a row. I will not tell you why. Yeah, just know we paid every week 30k. That's all. Yeah, there was never a point we went to the restaurant and said, Can we pay for a month? No, 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 no. Pay for a month? Forget it. And then the other guys came and the, that restaurant failed. They sold to another restaurant and they, on arrival, they said 50k. We're like, These are the people that devil uses. <laughs> To kill ministries. <laughs> it was a project. Raising 50k a week. It was a project. You might, you might be looking at oh, these buildings and think, wow, ma. no. Mm. Never did we pay two weeks in a row. And one time, our payer had gone to pay. We used, we used to pay around Thursday because that was en enough time to ramp up the resources he went to pay on a thursday and the chinese guy told him no church no pay no come back hey. one of our friends timothy Sebalamo, he worked in mtn his son who used to go and pay he had a, an mtn pickup God bless MTN. That was the church vehicle. <laughs> Official <laughs> transport. Yeah. So no pay, no church, no come back. And I remember that I had attended the graduation event of a friend of mine at Katikati. So, at that time, Pastor B3 used to hang with me like a handbag. When the phone call came, she was in my office. My office, my architecture office, it was nine feet by nine feet. Yeah? And it was the global headquarters. <laughs> yeah, and we had a store a store one meter by two meter store that's where we kept the sound equipment our, our biggest re net worth the, the things that we owned as a church yeah it was that sound equipment it was the global headquarters of worship harvest ministries international hey yeah so the call came in i just somehow i remembered katikati it must have been the, it must have been the lord we drive to Katikati, find the manager, talk to him and says, you can have the place, a hundred thousand. We're like, a, a what? <laughs> 50K was nearly taking us out of business. Now you want a hundred thousand. We negotiated for like an hour to bring, to take off 20,000. To 80,000 per Sunday, half day usage. That Sunday we arrived at Katikati with our equipment and we saw the biggest hall ever. We are like, Lord, if you fill this hall, may your servants depart in peace. You know, when you're so few that a small venue intimidates you. I remember going to America one time and visiting this church whose stage, the stage of the church, was the size of our church. 
So you go to some of these places and you wonder whether to be inspired or annoyed. <laughs> so that was us. Now, a little one is becoming a thousand. Isaiah 2, 2 to 3. Isaiah 2, 2 to 3 says. Isaiah chapter 2, verse 2 to 3. Now it shall come to pass in the latter days. Amen. That the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established on the top of the mountains. And shall be exalted above the hills. And all nations shall flow to it. The Lord's house in our context, in our present dispensation is the church. And the prophet anticipated that a time will come when the church will be the most glorious establishment on earth. More glorious than governments. More glorious than businesses. More glorious than cultural institutions. More glorious than anything you can think of. And I can tell you, maybe you've suffered so long that you doubt that this is even possible but you're going to see it happen in the name of jesus if you just stick with it if you just stick with it with all the wounds and all the betrayal and all the whatever if you can find someone you can cry with and go back pick up that microphone and keep preaching you're going to see the word of the lord fulfilled a time is coming in this nation when in every neighborhood the thing, the reference point will no longer be the other shop the border border stage the, the whatever, the school the, no, 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 the district headquarters no, no, it's going to be the church it will be the church it will be the church people will say you mean around this church or around that church where are you going no 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 you, when you find vive church turn left yeah. yeah when you find cpm turn right hey when you find mavuno uh, take a board hey it's going to be the church and, and look look i i know you probably have gone through too much and i sound like hollow uh, no you just stick with it stick with it yeah the key thing is stick with it yeah amen we just finished our easter sunday I, I'm, I'm sure it was easter sunday everywhere right <laughs> We just finished our Easter Sunday, and this past Easter Sunday, across all the different worship harvest locations, we had more than 9,000 people attending garage. Yeah, 9,000. That means if they were to come here, they wouldn't fit in this building. 9,000 from Katikati being too big. For those who don't know Katikati, it sits about 250 people when you have really squeezed them. Otherwise, ordinarily should sit 200. But when we arrived there, we were around 30. So it was too much. 9,000. And we just got started. Yeah, we've got every prophetic indicator to say the next five years we are going to do a lot more than we've done in the last 15 years. Because when you stick with it, you create momentum. Amen. A little shall become a thousand now we have to deal with the how part all these stories sound good but maybe your story is a bit different and you're saying okay 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 okay, okay. what do i do next so how does a little one become a thousand and i would like to share five quick points on how a little one can become a thousand and after that one after a thousand you start moving into strong nation mode amen 
Woo. Are you blessed? Is, is it too intense? It's okay. It's, the pressure is enough. It's not too much. Okay. There's tea and coffee in case it becomes too much. We just, and, and here, by the way, no one is going to be looking at you when you're putting sugar. You know sometimes how you put sugar because something is disturbing you. So you just keep putting. And you go and take some syrup. <laughs> you're taking some sugar with coffee. Or taking sugar with tea. Some people don't take tea with sugar. They take sugar with tea. Yeah. They know themselves. How does a little one become a thousand? There is a story in the Old Testament which we could have read all of it, but for time we will not. So I'll give you the context and then I will just pick verses, if, if that's okay. So there was again, as I said, a man called Abraham who was a little one, an unknown entity. And then God came and spoke to him and started a journey with him. He had a son of promise called Isaac. That son of promise had many children called, no, had another son, Lord have mercy, called Jacob. And then Jacob became a nation. That's not what I'm teaching about, but it's very instructive. Is there a nation called Abraham? Is there a nation called Isaac? What is the name of the nation? Do you know why? He had 12 sons. I, Abraham couldn't become a nation because he had one son. They call that succession. Isaac couldn't become a nation because he had two sons. They call that addition. Jacob became a nation because he had 12 sons. They call that discipleship. And he was the least righteous of them three. Yeah, like he was the crook. All the other righteous men couldn't become nations because all they knew was how to run a church. Then the crook who knew how to reproduce himself and make disciples became a nation. So just don't run a church where you're the everything. Produce sons and daughters. And in Christ, you're not limited to 12. You can overdo it. Even Jesus, when he came around, he copied who? He didn't copy Abraham. He didn't copy Isaac. Who did he copy? Jacob. He also had 12 sons. Not in the natural. So you don't have to worry about family planning. Jesus had 12 sons. He became, he's, a, he's not just a strong nation. He's mighty nations. Billions strong. Jesus. Because he had 12 sons. Whom he named apostles. Uh, I think proclaim has begun for some people now. Some people's eyes are starting to be opened. They are starting to see the possibilities when you move from running a church to multiplying yourself. Ah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, so this man, Jacob, who was renamed Israel on that night when he wrestled with God, became a nation. And that nation was enslaved in Egypt. And God sent a man by the name Moses, my namesake. Yeah. It's great when my name is from in the Bible. I can find my name in the Bible. You know, if you're Beatrice, I don't know. But, yeah. Just, just, that's a joke. Don't go re disturbing the people at the registration because you're renaming yourselves. I'm Moses. Yeah, even when you're a lady, you're trying to name Moses. Anyway. 
and this nation was enslaved in Egypt and God sent Moses. Moses got them out. And so Moses is, has got them out. It's now a, a strong nation. In other words, he has already become. But then there is a certain way in which he's leading the nation that is not going to be helpful. So one day while they were out there in the bush, Moses is doing his thing his father-in-law of all people father-in-law wow now for me my father-in-law is wonderful but not everyone may have a very good really so his father-in-law comes with his wife and children and says i'm coming to see you he welcomes him he goes out of the tent he bows down he welcomes him he honors him he tells him what the lord has done he acknowledges what the lord has done he offers a sacrifice and then the next day, he's seated in his tent. This is the father-in-law. And he's watching Moses in his tent. Yeah? So they were all having coffee. I don't know if they had uh, sanitizer, brago sanitizer. Uh, there was no COVID, so they didn't have masks on. But he just sat and he observed Moses doing counseling from morning until evening and then <laughs> afterwards he, he, he had a, an inter uh, over dinner hmm? I don't know what they were eating probably Brolex Chicomando and something yeah wilderness canteen so they are there eating uh, in the wilderness canteen I said, what's the thing you're doing? I saw lines of people the whole day. What, what, what it is? And Moses is like, what are you doing? Like, no. What do you mean? That's my job. I sit there. They bring their issues. I solve them. We go. That's, it's, this is Moses International Ministries of the Wilderness. Yeah, the Lord showed me in a burning bush. So the father-in-law says, if you could give me verse 17, verse 17 of Exodus 18. Let's read together. Uh -huh. So Moses' father-in-law said to him, the thing that you do is not good. In other words, you can be doing a good thing, but not in a good way. You might, the Lord called you, you may even have seen a burning bush like Moses. Some of you, the Lord, the way he spoke to you when you started ministry is so vivid. It scares the rest of us who just feel like we are guessing. But you know, even if the Lord spoke to you, you can be doing the good thing in a bad way. Like Moses. This is the thing that you do is not what? Both you and these people who are with you will surely wear yourselves out. For this thing is too much for you you're not able to perform it by yourself. Listen now to my voice. Are, are you there? Are people there? Listen now to my voice. I'll give you counsel and God will be with you. Right? Tell me verse 24. Verse 24. Verse 24. Let's read this, please. If your phone is disturbing you, release it right now and read verse 24. Uh-huh. So... And did all that he had said. Moses listened to his father-in-law. Now, the first point in becoming a strong nation, or a little one becoming a thousand, is being an avid learner and follower. You must be a learner. If you're the kind of person who says, I know what I'm doing, you are finished even before we start. For a little one to become a thousand, you must be a what? A learner, a listener. And really, right now I'm preaching to the choir because you're here. All those who think they know they, are, they know what they are doing, they're not here. You, you're here because you're thinking there might be an idea. You know, sometimes the way conferences work, it can just be one thing said, or one experience, or something, a song. It's, it, it's amazing. 
It can just be experiencing. It might be just seeing a person. It can just be seeing how people are dressed. It's interesting how God works. But the point is to posture ourselves to be learners. One of the greatest advantages of this church called Worship Harvest is because none of us has ever gone to Bible college properly. We are not well educated in these matters. So, we, and we know it, and we acknowledge it, and we carry ourselves around like that. Steve Jobs said, stay foolish, stay hungry. We are hungry, foolish people around here. You just come around and, and see. We copy everything that seems to work anywhere. Like, what, 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 what? Hey, copy. Just copy. Don't ask questions. Everything that seems to work in this church, we copied it from someone. We are learners. Become a learner. Pastor. Become a learner. <laughs> and a follower. Let me, you see, you might be thinking that Moses was some small boy there with a stick. So his father-in-law could come and say, do this. And say, okay, daddy. No, 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 no. Let me paint for you a picture. You have a whole nation in the wilderness, right? Who makes military decisions? Yeah? Moses, so he's the, he's, what do they call, he's the high command of Israel. Yeah, he's the commander-in-chief. Who received the law and gave it? So he's the judiciary. No, no, he's the leg legislature. The, those who don't know how nations work, there's legislature, judiciary, and executive, yeah? So the legislature are the people who make the laws. So Moses is the one who received the law and gave it. So he's the parliament. He's the high command. Who, who, who judges the people's cases? He's the judiciary. Who makes executive decisions of who goes where, what, what, what? He's the cabinet, he's the president, he's the king. Who is the man of God who God talks to? He's also the archbishop. Now, imagine a nation where all those functions are embedded in one man. The military function, one man. The legal function, one man. Executive function, one man. The spiritual function, one man. And then that one man has a name. Eh! The, too much investment in that one man. You know, some people, they, they, they tried. They said, this is too much investment in one man. We need to do something about it. Eh! They found out that it was a bad idea. One of them was Moses' sister, Miriam. And his brother Aaron. It usually starts with those who think they know you well. Yeah. It starts with those who think they know you well. Does God talk only to Moses? What a, 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 a God came and said, Moses just fell on his face on their behalf. Then afterwards, the sons of Korah, the priests, those are usually the pastors in your church, come and say, This Moses thinks too much of himself what is it 140 hmm? over 250 250 Whew. the the earth opened like this and they went in and then it closed they had a make a, a bad style funeral service conducted by god himself these guys were poking their Noses on the wrong fellow. So this is the Moses we are talking about. Then the next day, I don't know why people don't learn. The next day, uh, many of them gather and say, Sha, you killed. Ay, 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 ay. He sent Aaron and said, Take the censer now. Run. It has begun. By the time Aaron managed to run through that, 14,000 down. That is. So, man of God. I want to propose to you that you are not yet at the level of Moses. I think. Over you are. 
I haven't heard of any people being swallowed at your church. And hopefully I won't hear. <laughs> but if this man who God looks at in that light could listen to his father-in-law and take instruction and obey. Because the Bible says Moses did all that he said. Because Moses could have been saying, you are a priest from Midian. You are not a man of the God of the... Of, you know, he was a priest from Midian. He wasn't the, a, a priest of the living God. You know, your religion, what? I, I, because I took care of your sheep now, you think, you're a shepherd. You, how, what do you know about leading nations? But Moses listened. Who you honor and follow will determine where you go in ministry. Who you honor and follow will determine where you go in ministry. Yeah. If you think that you are the first thing that has ever happened, and the whole world is so blessed to have you around, my friend, <laughs> there is nothing new under the sun. There have been people who have come and gone. They have done great things. Follow. Who you honor and follow will determine where you go in ministry. Who are you following? A man I didn't follow of, of people. It's been one of my biggest blessings. When we started, we didn't know what we, didn't know what, what we were preaching. And God miraculously sent a man called John Cato, who introduced us to the discipleship evangelism course of Andrew Womack. That's when we say, what? Salvation is by what? Grace. Righteous is by faith. The things were always in the Bible, but we didn't see them. We just swallowed everything, hook, line, and sinker. And if you listen to us, you'd think we go to Andrew Womack Church. We were abused, called all sorts of things. We didn't care. We found something that's working because what we had wasn't working. As a result of following Andrew Womack, my marriage was saved. Yeah. This church survived. People were healed. We understood grace. You see, there are people who come to worship us and they just think we are one ongoing joke. Because people are so happy, they look like they are drunk on something. No, we actually don't drink alcohol around here. It's just the joy of knowing how much the Father loves us. Look, if you're looking for any church where people understand the Father's love for them, it is this church. Yeah, you can't convince people here about anything. They are so established in the That's why they are happy, generous. What? They don't go around pulling rank and showing you how important they should be. No, they just, yeah. You find them serving you tea, you don't know they run companies. You think they are serving tea because they have nothing to do. No, they took a time off their jobs and running their businesses to come and serve you. Why? Because they understand the grace of God. Because of Andrew Womack. Recently, I made a decision. I just printed all the pictures of the people who I think have had significant impact on our ministry and put them in my office so that I always remember them. Yeah. So when you come there, you will see this picture and you may misunderstand the, the, the significance of their being in my office. No, I'm just saying, if it wasn't for Andrew Womack, I wouldn't be here. We would have no ministry. I wouldn't be married. At least to the same beautiful girl I'm still married to. Become a follower. Become a follower. We followed Andrew Mark. We learned about grace. We followed Mike Breen. We started missional communities. He was a pioneer of missional communities. Missional communities. If you take missional communities out of worship harvest, we, you don't have a church left. Right now, there are 419 missional communities. And those missional communities lead more than a thousand people to Christ every month. Because the evangelism is done by the missional communities. 
I don't, I don't do much evangelism. Very few people get saved here in the building and on, online. They, they do, but not. it's totally insignificant. Now, look, we used to have about 500 salvations a year. A year. Like when we compile the people who have got saved after a whole year, it used to be about 500 people. Now we are having a thousand a month just by shifting strategy. Without Mike Breen, we would just be lost in the woods. We wouldn't have the results we are having. We wouldn't have all these amazing leaders leading missional communities. Are you there? Yeah. John Maxwell, leadership. Out of that came Harvest Institute, Harvest School of Ministry, School of Practical Business, just John Maxwell straightforward financial growth masterminds and all those things we have here matt from new thing matt came and started us on Ax matt and Teleria. they came and started us on accelerating in what in uh, church planting yeah we were ready to church planting but we were stuck or we were moving slowly we opened up we invited people they didn't come so he did it only with one church now we are high speed high speed yeah because we're like okay what come he came every three months he would fly in from nairobi and train us on how to multiply your church quicker are you there recently we started following bishop doug Howard mills of lighthouse chapel these guys are crazy there are like 6,000 churches. You see, when you have 21, like us, and someone has 6,000, you, you just keep quiet and do whatever they say. That's what we do. For us, that's, you, your, your approach may be very different. I'm just telling you my approach. Mine is to follow hard. Yeah, when I decide to follow a person, I follow hard. Like I listen to Bishop Doug almost every day. I used to even preach short sermons. Now I preach long sermons. And I'm looking at this clock. Hey. Here is what the enemy is going to do. He's going to discredit people in your eyes so that you don't follow them. The enemy's number one strategy is discredit the witness. Discredit the witness. Let me tell you, unless you're intending not to succeed, if you become successful at all in ministry, can I give you a guarantee? People are going to come up with stories about you. Yeah. That one, just be ready for it. Don't be shocked. Don't be annoyed. Just keep going. Because that's the enemy's strategy. To discredit you, so that those who should have gained from you don't gain from you because in their hearts they're you're already discredited even if they've never had the opportunity to really ask you these things that people say about you are they true or not because many people here you know things about people that actually you can't prove to be true but the enemy has just set you up so that you have no one to follow because as long as the anointing lies with men and women they will always have issues elijah had issues but elisha had to follow him saul had serious issues but david had to follow him who should you be following that has been discredited in your eyes that you need to go and wash your eyes so that you don't get stuck if you're looking for an angel to follow the angels don't plant churches the people you're going to follow are going to be people with very interesting weaknesses. <laughs> Pastor James. <laughs> but you have to follow. Right? Find someone to follow. I, I got this quote from Bishop Oedepo. He said, you walk by common sense. That's how you learned how to walk common sense you just look at adults walking and you're like i think i can do that you run by principles if you're going to participate in the olympics there are principles you follow yeah you don't eat katogo in the morning 
and uh, uh, to commando at break, and then you show up on the track. No, there are principles if you are to win in a race. So you walk by common sense, you run by principles, but you fly by instruction. Pilots don't operate on principles or common sense. Pilots fly by instruction. The day you learn to follow instructions, you are going to multiply your speed. Speed, speed awaits those who are willing to follow instructions. Jesus told his disciples, follow me. He didn't say study me. He didn't say read about me. <laughs> and I'm telling you something that you should do for the people you lead in your church. Tell them, follow me. Yeah. They're going to say, no, for us we are following Jesus. Tell them, go find him and follow him. Yeah. Around here. <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm scandalizing some of you. Yeah. You see, people are saying they are following Jesus, but they have no living example. That's why we have all sorts of funny people in church, fornicators, mean people. What? Because there is no living example. Follow me. Jesus told them, Follow me, and I will make you become fishers. The person you follow makes you become something. If you're not following anyone, you're not becoming. I told you there are five points. This is only the first one. Successful nations copy each other. And unsuccessful nations copy each other. Yeah. That's why all the poorest nations... I, I learned this from Bishop Doug. It's only nations which specialize in agriculture that have famines think about it it's a contradiction that the nations whose biggest economic activity is agriculture are the ones where there are people lacking food there is a problem yeah you see all the cars are the same they just keep changing the whatever toyota nissan mitsubishi but they are all the same have you ever stopped to think the steering wheel is the same they all have an odometer speedometer side mirrors gear lever what accelerator pedal brake pedal wind screen it's all the same just the, the, you you the, you're here in a cycle we want to do our original thing there is nothing on the other side find something that works and follow it stop wasting time people's lives are at stake billions you're here innovating Point two. <laughs> Are we here? So how does the little one become a thousand? One, by becoming an avid learner and follower. Two, by becoming a man or woman of prayer. <sighs> this one, Pastor James Kato, is going to come and take us deeper so i'm just going to like skim on the top because really i'm not even was it yeah but by becoming a, a man or woman of what a prayer verse 19 verse 19 b of where we were moses and jethro so it gives him this counsel verse 19 b okay after the colon what does it say together together uh-huh Stand before God for the people so that you may bring the difficulties to God. The church is simply an altar to which people come. The church is simply an altar to which people come. The church is not a building. Even these things people say, the church is the people. Okay, you gather the people. Even a club is people. Yeah, even a club is people. Does it make it a church? When does a group of people qualify to start being a church? When they start praying. Yeah. I'm telling you. 
You see, some of us, we don't look like prayer people. Because prayer is not about looks. Yeah, there are some brothers, when they come to church, they look like they are the prayer people. They have this Old Testament look on them. And then the, the, and then the way they walk around and the language they use. They use KJV only English. I greet thee, sister. Dost now, dost thou know that it did strain last night? For behold, the Lord was kind to us and watered the earth with the precipitation from the heavens. I see that thou art, eh, hey, thou wist not that. Yeah. So when you look at a guy like Isaac Macharia, please stand up. <laughs> yeah. Please stand up. Please stand up. Look at the people. Look that side. Does he look prayerful at all? No, no. Yeah. You can sit. He turned 40 the other day. Welcome to the club. He doesn't look prayerful at all. You think these are the jokers in church. They even put on things on their head. Look, it's not about how you're dressed. In church, I discovered we talk more about prayer than we actually pray. Yes, we talk more about prayer than we actually pray. In fact, can I, can I tell you a secret? Can I tell you a secret? <laughs> Are you enjoying? Okay. All your people, the people you lead, eh? the people in your church, eh? they think you pray five times the actual prayer you have. Yeah. In their minds, at 3 a.m., you're already awake. Shakele bosinda, le maka broko seke treke bra seke te. That that when they see you going up there in the pro, that's what they 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 know they are covered. You've prayed for everything that pertains to them. Yeah, yeah, that's what they think. That's what they think. Am, am I lying? Am I? You just go and ask your your members. Do a quick survey on Sunday. How long do you think I pray? They'll say, I think maybe eight hours. Maybe three hours. Yeah, that's what they think. What's the reality? <laughs> you know, I, I had planned to wake up and pray to this morning because I knew I was going to minister. So this is my principle now. I learned it. When you're going to pray, Minister, pray. I, my our service is here at nine o'clock. I come to the building at six, and I go to my office and pray until the service. So, but I woke up just on time to dash to the bathroom and not be late. Five thirty is when I woke up. Oh my God! So you're looking at a person who you think prayed this morning, who did not pray this morning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah but the anointing is still there right god is still working but i'm just telling you even me you're here you're thinking where i came from macabre no i woke up late i've been a bit tired so i slept properly yeah yeah my wife woke up i could hear her waking up Go out. She has her own prayer room. Me, I stayed. And lost in a negotiation with a blanket. But here I am. Now you, you see. Okay. okay. Eh? It's what? It's our prayers. <laughs> Stand before God for the people. Prayer. I used to be a prayerless pastor, I should confess. Because I knew all of these other things about church planting, church growth. Because I was an avid learner, I thought it was the strategies that were going to cut it. I, 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 was, I was a student. So when, when I woke up in the morning, my typical uh, like quiet time would be like some 20 to 30 minutes of prayer and then about one hour of Bible reading. That's why I was, I'm very proficient in the word. Then I started listening to Bishop Doug and he said, he said, Jesus said, could don't you wait even an hour 
It's like a basic Christian life is an hour a day. That's basic. That's for the Christians, not the pastors. I was like, eh, this guy, he has thrown me even outside the Christians because I wasn't even doing an hour. Are there people? Ah, just look straight. Don't look around. People might think. So I, I learned. I, I said, okay. Okay. If that's what it takes, I'm going to learn how to pray. How can you tell you've prayed an hour? You have to use a timer. Did you know without using a timer, you, did I tell you that people think you pray longer than you actually do? Can I tell you another person who thinks they pray longer than you do? That you pray longer you. Yeah, yeah. I'm telling you, try it one day. Because you're going to start. Shake Then you feel like oh my even like a sweat comes. Zindebra Sakata Legede Prokoze Teke no Yingizagiendala. Then you enter third gear, greater Rebo Sikata. Now you are at Pastor James's level. <laughs> Ah, 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 then you'll be like, I think that's like an hour and a half. Then you check 12 minutes. 12, I tell you, I kid you not. Try it, try it, try it. 12 minutes. And you, you think we've been here an hour? 12. Yeah, I was shocked the first time. I, so, someone is messing with my watch. Time yourself and just say we've started at 6 12. If it's not 7 12, we are not getting out of this room. Let's first get to the level of ordinary Christian, then we can go to pastor's level. Amen. <laughs> Why are people looking at me funny? <laughs> yeah, timer. Then you pray, then you time. So pray. Become a, a person of prayer. First Kings 17, 1. And Elijah the Tishbite of the inhabitants of Gilead said to Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel lives before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years except at my word. You can only exercise authority outwardly if you're standing before God. If you're standing before God. Ever since I started doing that praying thing, some things have be started happening. The church is growing rapidly. Like we are now adding about a thousand people every month or every two months in attendance. We get miracles, reports. There was a young man. I want him to come and, you know, like I see him. He had a stroke. He was watching us at one of our hosting centers. And he said, we were praying at the end of the service. And he just got up and started running. Yeah, started running. He could feel the ground below his feet. Remember, he had had a stroke. He had been told, you're going to need how many months to recover? What? He started running. He, he couldn't believe it. He sent me a text. He said, people may not even believe this, but I needed you to hear it from me. The thing we are involved in is spiritual. Yeah. So after you have organized all your strategies and tactics, please let's go and pray, pastors. And please don't be. <clears throat> you see, when you come from certain streams of the church, eh, people just assume you are prayerful. Like if you are from Miracle Center, me, I think you pray the whole night automatically. Now it might be a different what story. So there can also be that thing of but it's not about we. No, it's about you okay yeah so let's go and pray use a timer play some music while praying the music silence is much slower than when there is music that's why when they say let's have a minute of silence it becomes very uncomfortable very quickly so if you want to pray longer play some music Please, I'm now giving you real practical things. Time yourself, 
play some music, find a consistent time and place as much as is possible. Those of you who are into this prayer thing, you know that travel is what, the worst thing that can happen to you when you have to shift spaces and what it becomes harder unless you are really, yeah. But always have that kind of Bluetooth speaker that you can use to play music off your phone when you need to pray. Make sense? Point three, by teaching people the word of God. <laughs> wow, point three. No, not, this is not under prayer. How a little one becomes a thousand. What did he tell him? Verse 20. Verse 20. You shall teach them the statutes and the laws and show them the way in which they must walk and the work they must do. I'm not going to go too much in detail, but teach people the word. Okay? Teach the word. Teach the word. Teach the word. The word of God is the seed. The Bible says the sower sows the word. If you want the results God gives, teach the word. Let's, in, when it comes to the word, let's all become Baptists. Yeah? <laughs> Dr. Dennis Kilama is here. Yeah. And, uh, and Dr. Rich Mondwandera. Now, they are words may have Baptist in them, but I don't know how Baptist they are. But one of the good things we know about the Baptist church is teaching. Teaching the word. Learn to be an expository teacher of the word. Where you take a text and teach from it consistently. Not just you show up Praying tanks, be like shake a Lord, give me a word. You're, you're trying to get the word on the pulpit. Look, your people are going to be hungry. Teach the word. Prepare. Take time to prepare. Yeah, I like to tell our pastors that anything, any sermon preparation that takes you less than three hours is probably substandard. Yeah, any sermon preparation that takes you less than three hours is substandard. Three to five hours yeah. is a good gauge. Prepare. Prepare. Have not. You see, I have not. I'm not trying to guess what to say. I'm not trying to pluck it from memory. Have not. Prepare. Teach. Amen. And teach for obedience. Yeah. Matthew 28, he said, teaching them to obey to observe the purpose of teaching in a discipling environment is obedience not knowledge right now we have people with too much knowledge and very little obedience in the church i would rather people receive little and they obey it than a lot to disobey it because that makes them foolish say the wise man is the one who had my sayings and did them and the foolish one also had the sayings and did not do them. Isaiah 60 verse 1 says, Arise, shine, for your light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. This is a, a loaded verse. It says, Arise, shine, for your light. Light is not like sunrise. No. The prophet wasn't speaking at night. It's revelation. Bible says the entrance of your word brings light and gives understanding to the simple. Paul writes and says that I pray for you that the eyes of your understanding may be enlightened. So when people start receiving revelation, what happens? They are ready to rise and to shine and to experience the glory of the Lord. The thing that's keeping the church down is biblical illiteracy people are excited they are shouting but they don't know the promises let Sunday morning at your church be the reading of the will people come to hear the will being read so that they know what part what is their privilege and what is their responsibility in it amen all oh, that would teach the word the most established and stable Christians are the ones who are taught the word well. That's why you find that in Baptist churches, people may not be too jumpy, but they are very solid. Yeah. 
So let's do all the other stuff. Praying, praying in the spirit. We should do all of that. And then teach the word. A wordless Christian is ready to lose the war. Yeah. People who don't have the word, they're already ready to lose because our only look, when when the devil was taken into the world, rather when Jesus was taken to the wilderness and the devil came, what did he do? Did he say, Get behind me, Satan? Like a zebra. No. When the devil came, he didn't Jesus didn't start casting out. What did he say? It is written. That should be the standard response to every provocation of Satan to a believer. It is written. But if you don't know what is written, <laughs> you're finished. And who is responsible to make sure people know what is written? It's us, the pastors. But if we are teaching other things other than what is written, then we are setting up our members to fail. Amen. Teach the word. Let your church be word heavy, not word light. Yeah, don't do word light international ministries. L I T E. Yeah. For you, you give word light. Yeah. You even just use half a verse and then you embellish it and what? Put salt and pepper and what? Two hours later, people shouting chairs are up. Ah! Half a verse. Oh my God. That's not wise at all. I can, I can dare say that the only content of your sermon that is transformational is the word part. Everything else is just to help it go in. Like how they do tablets and they coat them with what? The coating is not going to heal the sickness. Yeah, all the stories are just coating. All the stories I've told, those are coating. The real thing is the word. And you can find what I'm teaching you from Exodus 18. So you know, you have a reference. You have somewhere to go and find it. If you want your church to grow, start teaching the word. It's just going to grow automatically. I'm telling you, it will grow automatically. You will not sweat. Just teach the word. Verse 4. My goodness. No, not verse 4. Point 4. By discipling, multiplying, and distributing leadership. This is a big point. Pastor B3 is going to come up tomorrow and is going to take us deep in this point because this is too much. But what does this say? Verse 21, are you there? Sorry, team, I've used up my time and the time for the response. So they just might send people to tea immediately after this. Wow. Verse 21, let's read together. Moreover, you shall select from all the people, uh-huh, able men, I don't hear you, such as fear God, men of truth, hating covetousness, and place such over them to be rulers of thousands, rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties, and rulers of tens. Yes. So it gives us a guide on how to select these people. One, they should be able men. And in, our, in my context, women too. Because I think that doubles the available force, workforce. What does this mean? It means they should have natural leadership abilities. Yeah. You can't make ducks to fly even if you try. Yeah. Yeah. You can desire what? Pre if it's a duck, it's a duck. It's more not going to fly. That's why he says there are rulers of thousands, rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties. I'm not the one who came up with these things. People have leadership capacity and they have leadership leads. You get a, a person with a leadership capacity of 100 and you give them a church of 1,000, they will immediately turn it down to the number that they can handle. I can tell you that. Yeah. And you can get some person there. They are high capacity. You give them a church of 50 people. Before you know it, it's 500. It's just capacity to lead. It has nothing to do with holiness or the lack thereof. Hitler was evil and he had incredible leadership capacity. He was an able man. Now imagine if Hitler was a bishop in the church. Yeah. Able. This unfortunately may not be your close relatives. 
true or not true. None of Jesus' immediate 12 was his relative. One, they should be able. Two, they should fear God. People with a reverence for God. People who have a reverence for God also have a reverence for authority, human authority. This business of me, I only fear God. I, 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 no, it doesn't work. That's why Moses respected his father-in-law. And they hate covetousness. These this should be people who practice radical generosity. Yeah. For us in this church, uh, don't tell anyone, this is a top secret. We can't appoint you to any position of leadership if you are not a tither. Yeah. Don't tell anyone. I'm just telling you. You, you can go and appoint people in your church who have never given anything and make them an elder. Yeah. But Jesus said that where your treasure is, your heart will be. Also, how do you tell that people's hearts are for the ministry? By their giving. I can guarantee you that most of the trouble you've had with people is with people who are not generous with the church. And then you put them there because you th when they talked, you thought they had something. No, talkers are different from leaders. They are momentum makers and they are momentum fakers. They are different. I'm just trying to give you some very practical things you can take home. Men who hate covetousness. How do you tell they hate covetousness? By their generosity with God. Able men who hate covetousness. Now, I'm going to teach you something slightly different in regard to able men, which I don't want you to go without. So, he's encouraging you to choose able people. But not just ability, but also reverence for God and authority and generosity. That's a balanced leader who fears God and is ready to serve. Now, in, I know that in the room we have people who serve at different levels in the ministry. I want to tell you a, a, a principle. You will never be tempted by what you don't have. You will never be tempted by what you don't have. Here's what I mean. Churches, one of the deepest problems with churches is rebellion and divisions. Okay? And the rebellion and divisions don't start with people who are on the fringes. It is people who are at the core because they have the influence. Okay? So I'm teaching this to if you serve under a ministry, how not to abuse your influence? Or if you serve as the leader, how to be careful with how you distribute influence and leadership? Don't just to get excited and tell the person you are my deputy. Where is the faithfulness? Because you're setting them up to be tempted with the influence and authority they have to abuse it if they haven't proven themselves. I know um, the point hasn't reached, but it's about to. So here is the point. Who in your church is going to, be, to have the highest temptation to create division and, and, and what? And, and rebellion. It is the people who are next to you in authority. Because they have the influence. They have the influence. But oh, I know these are your friends, but I can tell you they are the ones who have the greatest temptation. For me, it is these people here at the front. And they know it. And don't quick quiet about it. Talk about them in advance. Because if you start teaching after the fact, they will know, ah, Rakubanga now is teaching this thing. No, teach them before people get opportunity to what? Think about Moses. Who, are, who were the first people to challenge Moses' authority? Aaron and Miriam. It wasn't outsiders. And afterwards, who was the next? Sons of Korah, Levites. The most classic example is in heaven. 
who dared challenge the authority of God. It wasn't some seraphim on the fringes who was in charge of the pearly gates. No. It was one of the three archangels. This is uh, who? Michael, there is. Gabriel and Lucifer. The temptation had to go for one of those. And Lucifer fell for it. Because you can't be if 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 the lead pastoral position is so far away you are a deputy third assistant usher you can't be tempted uh, uh, true or not true yeah you have to be the associate pastor you have to be close and all those whose hearts have been wounded by these things they know what i'm talking about so I'm just saying it now. Because it's able men. You're not appointing people who can just chew gum and walk at the same time. No, people with real capacity. And then they come and then they get tempted. So how do you prevent it? Teach it in advance. Teach loyalty. Yeah. Test it. Uh, I, I test loyalty. I'll just say we have a meeting at 7 o'clock. No explanations. Yeah. If you don't show up, then I know that you don't. This is not your priority, so don't stay around me. Am I making sense? I know it's right now we have entered quiet, quietness Presbyterian Church, but you probably need to hear this. You see, if you go to the supermarket, you go to shop right. Hmm? Then it's you just saunter. You know some people. How can your church be neighboring soap shop right? Like, this life is not fair. So you just saunter into game. Eh? Break. You're in a break. The only time you're tempted to spend money that you have not budgeted is if you have the money. Can you face temptation to buy things you haven't planned for if you didn't carry your wallet? If you don't have any money? No. You just admire all the things. You don't even check the prices yeah window shop and go why you don't have capacity to shop so the only people who are tempted to rebel divide churches and and whatever are the people who have the authority the influence to do that just observe that as you go forward and in case you're here and you've been planning to do that please don't the, our mission is too critical for us to be engaging in those kind of things support the ministry where God has put you if he wants you to go out and plant he will make it clear to you there will be third witnesses usually there has to be a third witness to know that it's the Lord yeah he will show you and when you leave don't leave banging doors <laughs> yeah go quietly Rema maintain honor for where you came from send a seed regularly and 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 grow the relationships am i are, are there people you probably thought we are going to talk about the abomination or desolation at the holy place the cherubim and the seraphim we are dealing with real things amen this is a big point that's why i'm delaying here even though my time is up It's a big deception to just lead an organization and do your corporate stuff and not raise sons and daughters. Are you here? You can teach what you know, but you can only multiply who you are. You can teach what you know, but you can only multiply who you are. And the enemy doesn't mind you succeeding in quotes as long as you don't have spiritual children. In the ministry, real success is raising up not workers but sons and daughters who do even more pastor solomon is one of is are you here i'm finishing this is the first time i'm mentioning that is pastor solomon not around is any of your disciples here huh? are any of their disciples here you're not sure okay you come with your disciples or oh, one or two come quickly please and come with your disciple 
You are the controlling verb. So bring your disciple. Bring your discipler. And if any of your disciples, disciples around, they can come. There is a middle step missing. Second Timothy 2, 2 says, And the things you've learned from me among many witnesses, commit this to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. There are four layers. Four layers. Paul. Huh? Paul. Timothy. Right? Are you following? The heads are not nodding, shaking. What? Paul. Timothy. Faithful men who are able to teach others. In your ministry, you should have at least four generations of disciples to fulfill 2 Timothy 2.2. 2. New thing, I think they describe the movement if the church planting is happening at a fourth generation level, and I think this might be one of those inspirations. Hey, hey. So, okay. I'm going to ask because so this is a one one of your disciples one of these can stay so who of these is discipling who of these is being discipled by one of you hmm? uh, everyone has their people no 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 I need Okay, I'm going to ask that we clap for the four of these as they go back, go back. But thank you. Huh? Who is discipling who? Oh, come, these ends. Hey, let me see. Let's move over here. So you see that Pastor B3 has become a Paul the things you have learned from me among many witnesses this is Paul talking to Timothy commit this to faithful men this is Victor who will be able to teach others <clears throat> Previously, I used to be here, but now, even if I take myself out of the picture, the scripture is still fulfilled. Am I making sense? If you cannot do this exercise at your church, go and start. I'm willing to guide you, to show you. Okay? Just sign up with Pastor B3. And I'll get you into a mentorship space where I show you how these things happen. So that at one of the, uh, the proclaimed conferences, you are the example. You discipled people who 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 discipled people. Friends, this is how the church multiplies and runs and operates. You know, I don't even know his name. I had to read Victor's name on, on his because I met him once before at my home. I only know Pastor B3 very well and Pastor Solomon because of Pastor B3. She's a cluster leader. She leads a group of churches. They, she planted this church. She's a, a double mega multiple missionary church pastor. Is Victor one of your cohort leaders on Zona Pastors? One of your cohort leaders and is a mission committee leader. So he's a mission community leader, Zona Pastor, Locational Pastor, Cluster Leader. Okay. And I can take these ones away and bring another set and it will be the same effect. This is irreplaceable. I can tell you. Yeah, please, please. <laughs> Why didn't Abraham become a nation? He had one son. 
Why didn't Isaac become a nation? He had two sons. Why did the crook, the supplanter, the one who needed God to first break his leg, Jacob, why did he become a nation? He had 12 sons. Go start raising sons and I can tell you, one day you will have the level of joy that I have. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm very happy. Personally, Malimunda. When I look at these people, I'm like, what God? Why me of all people? What? Why? Why? I've never bribed you. Why, why me? Why? Why should you give me this honor and and privilege to have many generations of believers? Can I finish? Point five. Oh, I want on that point just to represent those people they talked about. Worship Harvest has 419 missional communities with 6,600 members in the missional communities, which is 83% of the church, leading 1,000 plus people to Christ every month. Point five, by engaging evangelism. Pastor Gerard Mwebe is going to come and, uh, and stir us up on this. Verse 25, I'm finishing. Verse 25. Uh, and Moses uh -huh, chose together able men and, of all Israel and made them heads over the people. Uh -huh. what, what, what happened? Give me, give me the numbers. Give me the numbers, people. Pastors, give me the numbers. Uh -huh. Rulers of thousands, rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties, and rulers of tens. In worship office, we like to say that our location pastors are rulers of thousands. Every location pastor knows they are moving towards being a mega church. Our location pastors are rulers of thousands. You can replace the word ruler with leader if it makes your heart pump at a less pace. Our zonal pastors are leaders of hundreds. Our cohort leaders are leaders of, cohort shepherds are leaders of, 50s and our mission committee leaders are leaders of tens. That's the operating principle. I just wanted to give it to you so you know it works. Now you are thinking, so you're saying evangelism, how does it relate? Is it, here is how it relates. Hmm? In your church, hmm? do you have leaders of thousands? Hmm? If when you're distributing leadership, do you have leaders of thousands? Because that's where it starts. You may have leaders of hundreds. I hope you have leaders of hundreds. You are not one pastor and then a crowd. Because armies don't work like that. There is structures. Generals, colonels, sergeants. What? That's why armies win. There is a command structure. You don't just find one guy and everyone else. That's how your church should be organized. Because you are in a war in case you didn't know. But if your church doesn't yet have not one leader, but leaders of thousands, you need to do evangelism because that's the only way to bring them in so that you have enough numbers to have leaders of thousands. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. It's been a great pleasure sharing with you this morning.